we can't even go sit in a restaurant and sit down and relax and eat without wearing a mask or going through all these da 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 da. A simple thing is taken away. The ability to go to a restaurant, sit with your friends, eat with them, laugh, enjoy, or go for a dance, or whatever is gone. or almost gone, or twisted, or mixed up with fear and worry and anxiety. Never thought that that would happen. So anything at any moment can happen to anyone. Anything at any moment can happen to anyone and everything can change for better or for worse. And we can see it. We've seen it many times in our lives. But somehow the mind is so attached it's into its fantasy, likes to fantasize these things. That it's so conditioned that it doesn't matter even a hundred times you have gone through this process and you have failed or whatever. It seems like you failed. Still, the mind doesn't want to come and say, you know what? Maybe I'm not in control. Maybe something else is running the show and I can manifest. I can create. It's not me who's doing it. Maybe some, some other greater force is the doer. I'm not the doer. We like to believe like 98 times I willed to make this thing happen and it never happened. But those two times that I willed to make it happen out of the hundred, I only see those two times. So look at me, look at me. I'm so mighty. I'm so powerful. I'm creator of the world. L look, those two times I made it happen and it went my way. But that 98 times that it didn't go my way, what was that? And the mind is refusing to look at that 98 times. It wants to just hang on to those two times. So it comes to this results that I am creating my own reality. I am in charge. I have free will. I have the power. It's only going to hang on to those two times and ignores the other 98 times. And it's so attached to this reality, wants to hang on to this world, this world. Wow, my world, my reality. I'm so gone ho for it. But every time he's trying to really hang on to it, whatever it is, is a love affair, it's a marriage, it's kids, it's work, it's money. Everything starts to crumble. Everything falls, falls away. But it's determined to come up with all kinds of logic and explanations that this is real, this is solid, this world is real. I am real. And it keeps refusing to look at the fact that every time it's hanging on to this real thing, this real thing falls into pieces, falls apart, refuses to look at that. It's so invested. And that invest, that invest investment into the results, investing heavily 
into results means I really want something to go my way. And if it doesn't go my way, then I'm going to be very miserable. I'm going to be very sad. Examine it for yourself. Spend this week, check it out. See that when things don't go your way or how much you're invested in making something to go your way. And then when that thing doesn't go your way, can you still be happy? Can you still maintain your posture of being still? Can you develop this attitude in your life that when things don't go your way, you're still happy, you're still vibrant, you're still your own self, whatever that is. It's an investment, it's money, it's a love investment, it's health investment. Can you develop this attitude that whether things go your way or don't go your way, you are still very happy. You're still in your heart. You're still experiencing the love. So it doesn't matter if things go your way or not. You are on your path. Then tell me if you suffer or not. Because a mind which is free from that cannot suffer. It becomes impossible for suffering to take place. Absolutely impossible. Body can suffer, of course. The body is going to suffer. Eventually it will get old. Eventually it will disease, get diseased. And eventually it's going to die. There's no doubt about it. But the person, the presence, the one who's free cannot suffer throughout any of it. We suffer because we believe we are someone, a person separated from the entire existence, capable of our own decisions. That's why we suffer. Because we make these decisions and there's a lot of wrongs and a lot of it doesn't go through. So we keep suffering because we're under this illusion that we're the ones who make the decision. The decisions are already made. Before you enter into this dimension, Ishwara, the Supreme, has a script for you. Here is your script. You're going to go into this dimension. These are the characters that are going to show up in your life. This is what you need to learn. This is your story. They hand you your script and boom, they send you into the body tube. And then boom, this becomes your life. And this is the life you're going to live. From the beginning to the end, everything is written. Your entire life is written. I know it's very tough. <laughs> it's very tough for the mind to accept it. What do you mean it's written? What do you mean? Your mind will come and say, what do you mean? That it's all destiny. It's all written. I don't have any choice. What do you mean by that? It's a big blow to the mind. It's a big knockout to the mind. And your mind refuses this. It's going to come up with all kinds of excuses. Oh, yeah, but Rama, da 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 da, Guruji, da 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 da, said this, said that, but I read this there. Or the entities who channeled through me told me that, blah, blah, blah. So the mind will come and bring all kinds of reasons and excuses to prove to you that you are a separate entity with your own free will. 
Why? Because it validates and it fortifies the existence of the mind. Of course, your mind is not going to submit to it because the mind is an illusion. It doesn't exist. It's just a bundle of thoughts. It's non-existing. Means your individuality is non-existing. That doesn't exist either. It's an illusion. You think you are someone separated, but you don't even exist, sweetheart. You're not even in the equation. You're just a thought. That's all you are. This entire story of yourself is just a thought. It never existed. And it never exists. First of all, none of it is here. All of it happened in your memory. Where is your past? Bring it to me. All of it is gone. The only thing is left from you is this moment that you're sitting here. We're looking at each other. This is the only thing that exists. The rest of it is non-existing. Your mind is going to come and wants to bring all these arguments and excuses because when you realize realization comes, the mind is the end of the mind. It means the death of the mind. So the mind doesn't want to die. So it's going to do whatever it, want, whatever it takes because it, want, it wants to exist. Your awakening is equal to the death of the mind. The ego, the sense of separation. Your awakening is equal to the death of the sense of separation. Means the death of your mind because your mind is the only thing that creates the separation. Because there is no separation. It was never separated. It's always one. It's never been separated. Except a thought comes to arises. The, the rise of a thought of me, me. And that's an illusion. You experience that that's an illusion when you're in absolute silence, because in absolute silence, there is no me. There's no thought. When you're absolutely in silence, there's no thought. And you come and say, oh my God, this is so great. I love it. I feel the oneness. I feel I'm such a group. Yeah, because there is no me. There's the lack of this person. That's why you feel free. Okay, I've gone almost to two hours. So <laughs> it started slow and then it picked up. Sharon, thanks a lot for your question. I appreciate it. You're always a delight to see and communicate with and keep asking your questions. I encourage it. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next week. You can contact me at info at Zaratustra.tv and my website is zaratustra.tv and you can reach out our facebook youtube and podcast as well as instagram uh, by zaratustra 5d i hope you enjoyed this broadcast and i look forward to connecting with you next week namaste much love mm -hmm.